Live from the Man Cave, Treadmills and Tangents with Coach Aaron Saron and his army of wellness warriors. Live in discussion of all things health and wellness, along with community topics they happen to stumble upon. And good morning, Omaha. This is Coach coming at you with another edition of Treadmills and Tangents, your health and wellness show right here on The Answer. We are live from the gym again. Live from the gym. Tim and I are running, getting ready to go down to Tulsa this weekend yes. for Labor Day weekend. Yes, and, indeed. And um, we're going to do some training down there. We go to a long-time seminar where we meet up with some of our coaches and mentors. And, and one of the wonderful things about the martial arts community is you get to train with people from all around the country. And yeah, yeah, that, and this is the 25th year, if I remember right, for for this seminar for this down in Tulsa. This particular seminar yeah. down in Tulsa. It started out at Gibson's Martial Arts down there, which is a legendary martial arts school in Tulsa. And um, Mr. Terry Gibson has has passed on since, but uh, the seminar has continued uh, in his honor and uh, with our instructor, uh, Master Chai. But anyway, um, yeah, so we're uh, we're heading to, we're going to be in Tulsa, and so we're going to record we're recording this one before we leave, and then I think we're going to try to record one. Uh, in route, I think yeah. that'd be fun. We're that'd gonna be... go live from the man truck. I had that thought too. Like we we could sit in the back and make the the other hooligans going with us drive up front, and then we can sit in the back and. But we're gonna have Doctor Lee with us. Lee we Slay will. Phone, That's so true. We'll get him yes. to weigh in on some cancer issues. He's yeah. always got some good insight. And before we continue, I want to remind everybody of our self defense clinic uh, next Friday, absolutely free. Our happy hour self defense, five thirty to six thirty, right here at Mid America Martial Arts. And again, I don't even want to call it self defense. I want to call it self awareness, self protection. We're going to do some just a candid talk about some things we can do to keep ourselves safe and, and avoid the situation if at all possible. So that's next Friday, self defense happy hour. And again, hope to see Chip Maxwell out there as well. Yeah, and, t- and tell your hey, friends, Chip. man, or or your or your mom, or your girlfriend, Especially or your it's sister. It's a good or... opportunity to have some, you know, daddy daughter time, mom Absolutely. daughter time. Or yeah. not even daughters. Just bring bring your sons too. Everybody can can be a little bit safer uh, in that respect. Now, Tim, you had a, an interesting. I love Facebook, but I hate Facebook. Yeah, uh, me too. Anybody that knows me tends to know I can I can get drawn into stuff. I tr- I try to stay as as. <sighs> apolitical as possible sometimes i can't help myself and sometimes i'll stir the pot i'm not gonna lie to you well sometimes you society it. makes it easy sure and you know there's something to be said for we understand in communication that uh our, our tone will change if we're in front of somebody vice the keyboard warrior the keyboard the keyboard yeah. warrior like we get really brave in some of the things that we'll say which is fine i mean right. dialogue is good but sometimes you know, is it real dialogue? Right. Uh, but you, uh, quote unquote, got into it with somebody yesterday. Yeah, I was. Uh, so everybody knows. Everybody that's listening to the show knows that I'm a I'm a big fan of keto. Been doing it for over, well over a year. Had great results. And so, and t- to be fair, keto ish. We're all right. We're all keto ish. True. Yes, I was very strict for a while. Now I am more of the the lazy keto. <laughs> um. So, uh, I have a few friends that have started picking this up and doing it. Um, and so one of my friends had posted like, Hey, I'm, I'm really trying to do this, but I'm kind of struggling. And the first post somebody put was keto is a fat, it's stupid. So of course I wanted to defend it. Cause I'm like, man, this has made so a like, huge lifestyle like, change. Gloves are coming I know, off. Like I started stretching on my keyboard. Like it's getting on man, <laughs> cracking the fingers. So, uh, getting a little air hood, dusting off the keyboard. So a couple of people kind of say some stuff and this person just is not, not giving up. So the first thing I, I come out and say is I was like, I have done keto and from experience, I can tell you that, uh, it does work. And she kept, she kept this, this woman kept calling it a diet. And I said, you know, it's not a diet. It's a lifestyle change. She's like, well, it's called the ketogenic diet. And I said, I get it, but it's a lifestyle change. Anything you do where you uh, change your nutrition, change your working out, make yourself better. If you go quote unquote back to the old ways, you are going to fall right back to the way you were. Well, that that holds serve for any diet. Absolutely, Whether right. South Beach. It happened to me on diet, Weight Watchers, Paleo. It's all at, whatever you want to call it. Right. The second you you go down a path, when you get off that path or off that regiment, you're going to revert back. Maybe not all the way back, right. but you're going to get away from what's making it work. So all diets are lifestyle changes. Right. right. Call it what you want. You know, call it keto lifestyle, which that'll freak people out too. But, you know, yeah, she's right. Once you get off it, you revert back. That's even an exercise regimen. Once you get off your exercise regimen, you're going to revert or you're not going to continue down that path. So I don't, she's right. But at the same time, so what? Right. So so her thing was like, well, keto just came out and it's a fad. So 
So I waited a little well, bit again, and then, I, and then I posted and said, did you know in the 1920s, they started using the keto diet to help with epilepsy? And she was like, they also give people tapeworm back then. I'm like, you don't, what I'm trying to get across to you is, it's, it's been not, around for a long it's not time. Fat. It might be right. fattish, it's, and it's got renewed interest. Right. But it's been around for, since at least the 20s. It was the oldest record I could find of people actually calling it like the ketogenic diet and what it was doing and stuff. So well, that's only because, that's when it was given the name ketogenic diet, Right. right? But that type of diet has been around for tens forever, of millions of years. And I tried to tell her, I said, our bodies aren't designed to take in the carbs and sugars that are in everything now. The sugar industry is, is a bad thing. And she's like, oh, well, you're not meant to just eat meat and like call me in five years. I said, I will be happy to call you in five years. So other people that I know that do keto are starting to get on this post. And I said, I went to my doctor, had my labs run, and I've never been healthier at 36. So someone else is like, hey, my wife and I have been on it for six months. She's a nurse. Her doctor said he's never seen her any healthier. So it started to get like – so finally she just quit answering. I think she was like – she gave up because well, – like, What's happening too is is now science and research are catching up with a lot of these quote-unquote diets. Right. And, and there's starting to be some longer-term studies. There's still not enough long-term studies, but there's, there's more and more evidence supporting different ways to eat. Now, again – in her defense, I'll say, look, it's not for everybody. Right. You have to find what lifestyle or diet best fits your needs and your goals. Probably more And what your body can handle. We know some people can't do can the handle. ketogenic diet. It doesn't work for them. Right. You know, and, and I, you know, some people say, you know, I had a hard time trying it. I just didn't feel good. And, and I tried to explain to them, well, you know, just like there's drug addictions and drug withdrawals. Yeah. The same thing happens with food. Like people that drink a lot of caffeine, when they try to cut cold turkey, they get headaches, they right. feel nausea. Same thing with carbs and sugars. Absolutely. With anything. So there's always going to be an adjustment period. But, you know, I faddish, yes. Okay, I'll get it. I mean, faddish is if you're going to, if you're the type of person that's bouncing from diet to diet, yeah, they're all faddish in that, sure. in that sense. But if you're the type of person who is making a lifestyle change and there's nothing faddish about it. That's, and that's the part that kept driving me nuts. She's like, it's just a fad. And I was like, it's only a fad if that's what you make it. If you do it and stick with it and keep doing it, it's, it becomes your lifestyle. So for me, like, lifestyle. I don't even, when we go out to eat, I'm always burger, no bun or something like that. Like, I don't even think like, man, I really like, it's just become what I do. It's natural for me. And, and so now it's, that's just what I eat. It's completely well, normal. I mean, let's, let's take it a step further. When you talk whole wellness of a person, Okay, your marriage can be faddish. Sure. If you're trying different things to spice it rather than committing to a lifestyle of happiness in right. your marriage. Like parenting can be faddish. Yeah. There's tons of parenting books. Well, we're going to try this now. Right. We're going to try this approach now. We're going to try – those are all faddish approaches. If you don't stick with any of them – Right. That's right. Yeah, that's fair. You, that's, you're that's never going to experience the long-term ramifications, good or bad. For anything. So you jobs, know, people jump jobs. So like, I mean, that she's means it's, right. But she, like you said, she's only right if you want to make it that way. Right. And that was my frustration. I, as I kept trying to tell her, I'm like, it's a, so fine. I was like, the last thing I'm going to say is if you're doing this and this is what you're going to do, this is a lifestyle change. And then I just, and then I, and then everybody started liking that. Sure. It was just going bonkers. Like people well, were you like, you could say, yeah. uh, you know, CrossFit gets accused of being faddish. Oops. And that right there, folks. That is, is a, a technical it, difficulty is, and foul. And I, it's, I don't know why it's not shutting off. That's uh, that that's how you know we are live from the gym and we are we are happening place because people are calling <laughs> on a Friday morning. We're not we're not quite as well oiled as Chip Maxwell and his crew is in the morning and Nick, um, but yeah, and uh, I didn't realize this was even gonna ring. But what what I was just saying is you know CrossFit gets accused of being faddish, sure. but there are people who've made it a lifestyle, right? So. And those workouts have been around forever. They're not coming sure. up with things yeah. that they're not reinventing the workout wheel. They are just taking things that have been there and now they're putting it into one thing and it's growing and it's, you know, it's got, it's got, you know, the, the click name CrossFit where so people, you know, are, are attached to that. So it's not, it's only a fat if you go do it for like three months and you're like, well, CrossFit didn't work for me. I don't look like the people on TV. So it, yeah, I agree with what you're saying. It's it, any, it can apply to anything in life, okay, jobs, yeah, whatever, so. like, but if you are going to get healthier, find something that works for you and then just stick with it. You got to stick through the highs and lows. Like I had months on keto where I had gained a pound and I'm like, well, it's not supposed to be this way, but I stayed the course and eventually it all worked so out. So you make a good point is that, you know, keto from the fad perspective, people are expecting this thing to work wonders. 
And I've had people in our own gym, you know, and, and I don't like to say I put people on keto. I like to say I like to I like to clean up their diet and, and give them approaches to making smart choices. But, you know, even the ones that would say, I want to go keto, like if they don't lose like 20 pounds in the first three weeks, be like, it's not working. Right. And I'm like, you're expecting faddish results from this right. thing, right? Because you see people losing a bunch of weight. Sure. And, and we always want to zero in on the, the uber successes right. of it. When it's like Which has the little asterisk like results not typical. Right. But but people like, don't see that. Give it time and then and then you know, how dedicated are you to it really? Right. Like so and then, you know, once they realize, okay, this is this is a continuum, this is a process, right. this isn't an overnight success. Right. And I think what she's getting to is that people are turning to it for overnight successes. Sure. Which okay, yeah, true. Faddish expectations Absolutely. out of that thing. Absolutely. But it, it's not supposed to be. Right. It's supposed you know? to be you're changing the way you do. And and low carb isn't can't be bad for anybody. Like if anybody is trying to do something, going low carb, I've never heard anybody that goes low carb and all of a sudden is like, oh, man, I feel way worse than I ever have. Like and doing it long term, no matter what you decide to do, you should feel better all the way around. Like your body feels better. My mind is clear. Um we have a our student, Amanda, you and I were talking to her the other day that she said, you know, she's had some stress lately. So she kind of went off the wagon and ate, had a whole rough weekend. And she's like, I've started getting joints like, hurt. Joint, and she started getting like, yeah, rash. her skin, she had like a rash, like just from that. So it's, there's so many components to it that, that we that's why I get, asked Amanda before we outed yeah, her on the it radio. Was, it was like on her arm too. So it wasn't like a weird <laughs> Vegas rash or anything, but uh, it's, it's one of those things like I almost want to jump to its defense because I'm like if you are doing it and doing it right and doing it long term and your body can do it, it's going to work. Well, you have to anymore, you know, with, with especially on social media and everybody's a, a social justice warrior to some extent. In this case, diet, a diet right. justice warrior. But, you know, you almost have to go, look, this is what I do. It is what it is. Yeah. You don't have to like it. Sure. You can try it. This is just what I do. Um, and then leave it at that. Yeah. You know, you kind of leave it at that. Yeah. My frustration was like, don't turn people off to it. If, and it's something she's never tried. Like, if you've never done it, how can you tell people it That's doesn't That's true. Work? And I admire people that will only give advice if it's something they've tried themselves. Right. Which is the, something Dr. Testament. Brad is, is big Dr. on. Dr. Brad the does carnivore. before he'll admit to any of his patients right. or recommend anything to his patients or even talk to him about it. He tries it out. Uh, we do the same thing here. I've sure. never done anything to any of our students that I haven't done myself or had right. done to me. Depending, sure. depending, what depending on what context, it is yeah. but anyway. hey we're going to take a quick break and uh, we're going to come back and, and talk about uh, some Twitter and what's in the news if you're listening to Treadmills and Tangents you're a health and wellness show right here on The Answer 94.5 FM 1420 AM we'll be right back When you walk into Mid-American Martial Arts, you're walking into more than punching and kicking. You're walking into a community, and that is what I think sets us apart from everybody else. We train anywhere from four years old, uh, and we have students as old as in their 60s here. Our main programs are Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu, Muay Thai Kickboxing, Judo, as well as our Strength and Conditioning program, which is our Training for Warriors program. Our main goal is that when people leave here, they feel better about themselves. You know, they're a little bit better as a person, they feel a little bit about their life, they feel better about their day. Now, everybody holds baggage, everybody has stress. This is the place where they can come in and put all that away for a little bit and work on themselves. Yeah, do we hope they can defend themselves better? Sure. Do we hope they can punch and kick a little better? Absolutely. None of that matters if they don't feel good about themselves. And that's the main key. If they can walk out of here feeling good about themselves, feeling good about their life, then, then we won that day. Guys, we're back. You're listening to Treadmills and Tangents. This is Coach and Tim coming at you live from Mid America Martial Arts. Live from the gym, from the live dojo. From the dojo or the dojang, depending on what you are. Uh, oh, I've not heard the word dojang before. Yeah, it's used interchangeably depending on what culture. Really? Yeah, dojo, hmm. dojang. Good and, to know. Yeah, but you know, speaking of which, if you walk into our gym, uh, you know, it's uh, the front room, our, our lobby area. We've got. Uh, three big statements on the walls. We've got dojo, community, and growth. And that's kind of, you know, our approach to, again, I always tell people it's not about punching and kicking. It's about just betterment of self. And, you know, when you talk community and growth as a person, community of people you surround yourself by, and then the dojo is just a place where it all happens. You know, that, that's kind of kind of what we're trying to do. 
Uh, anyway, I want to get to the news. Uh, I found an article that the Weird Herald uh, put out there uh, just the other day, and it says uh, more Americans die from overdoses and suicide than diabetes. Wow, that's um, and, interesting. And really, truth told, uh, they're pretty close as far as where they're ranked in, in terms of death toll. Uh, obviously, millions of people live with diabetes. Right, absolutely. Uh, and, and I think I don't want people to, to think that diabetes, this makes diabetes like it's not an issue. Um, it's a mil- definite issue. Yeah, it's a lifelong issue, right? I mean, and I, by no means am I glossing over overdose and suicide, but you know, those are obviously finite end results. And, and anybody that gets to that, point in their life it's terrible and we need to do a better job as a culture of addressing that and getting people help the mental health help and the psychological help and and recognizing signs prior to sure you know diabetes the only thing i would say about that is that that's a lifelong ailment and disease uh it's a metabolic disease that, that can be corrected in a lot of cases but it affects tens of millions of people and costs tens of probably hundreds of billions of dollars at this point in medical expenses and just ruins people's ways of life for a lifetime right um you know yeah you know it's and it's it's categorized as self-inflicted injury which is you know suicide and overdose kind of lumped together and uh self-injury and diabetes killed this, roughly the same amount of people in 2014. However, self-injury is beginning to outpace diabetes. Now, the thing with these numbers is a lot of people die from complications of diabetes due to diabetes, sure. right? So not necessarily diabetes itself, right? You know, yeah, circulation issues, they... you know, things like that. Um, yeah, you know, it's it's terrible either way. I agree. And, yeah, and, and they're both very fixable, for lack of a better term, sure. problems that we have. Yeah, in society. obviously, in the mental health thing, there's so many uh, uh, people that go through that, and I wish, and I hope someday it becomes less taboo. It's such a, it's such a thing for some people. It's like, oh, so and so goes and talks to somebody. Like, what's wrong with them? Like, nothing, nothing's wrong with them. It's just like, like taking a vitamin, right? There's, it's like exercising. Right. You're, we exercise and eat well to take care of our body. Why wouldn't you go to talk to somebody to take care of your mind and your emotions in your in your psychological state sure because if you get to the point where you're doing self-injury or 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 suicide i mean or you just feel bad like right. you, you feel bummed you like you're right. just depressed yeah or you're just not as energetic as you used to be you're just not as happy i mean and and i think it's a continuum right you don't have to be depressed to be not as happy as sure. you were absolutely right? right and so you know obviously there's a stigma with mental health and we don't you know i don't have any problems why would i go seek help right Rather than take some preventative medicine, sure. You know, same same thing in marriage. You know, just because you're in marriage counseling doesn't mean you have a bad marriage, right? You're trying to prevent that. Absolutely, yeah. And it's, I mean, life is short in the scheme of, of you know everything. Life is short, and why why would you not do everything you could to make yourself happy? It's like maintenance on a car. Your car needs an oil change. Most people do the oil change. It needs a tiny belt. Sure. You do the maintenance, and you do preventative maintenance because at thirty thousand miles, you should do. Yada, yada, yada. Well, you do that because you want your car to last. Sure. Well, think about athletes, right? We know the mental game is huge in athletics. And, and a lot of ath- athletes get sports psychologists. Yeah. A good friend of mine, I graduated high school with back in Pennsylvania, Julia Model. She's a PhD doctor now. That's, what she, that's her career, right? She's a sports psychologist. She gets performance improvement out of people. She just opened up her own practice. Wow, that's awesome. Uh, to begin doing that. And uh, yeah, so I mean, it, it's huge, right? So athletes have recognized this right. for a long time. I got to get the mental game squared yeah. away. So why are we so naive to not apply that to life? Right. To, to the average person, like if they're doing it, it's working. Like, And it doesn't have to be, oh, I want to be better at sports. I want to be better at this. Just You just want to be happy. Being happy is awesome. We're figuring out how to be happy. Sure. Like a lot of people, and I think I... I mean, full disclosure, sometimes I have a hard time being happy, like, because, you know, I'm always driving towards something else. And, and sometimes you forget to stop and smell the roses. You don't realize what you have. You're sure. not, uh, if, you, if you're the type of person who's never content, you always want more, not necessarily more in terms of materialistic, just more in terms of bettering yourself, you know, trying to do something better. Like, you forget what you have. You're just not, you forget to be happy with what you have. And right. I, I got to remind myself to do that. Sometimes like, hey, you know what? I got a great family. I got great kids. I got a great wife. 
I got a great house. I got a freaking pool in the backyard and a yeah. volleyball court. Like, you got an awesome dojo. What do I need to be pissed off about? Yeah. Yeah, do I want more? Sure. Right. I want more. More being relative for a lot of things. Right. But it's like, okay, just because I want more doesn't mean I shouldn't be happy with what I have. Sure. But that's hard. To That's hard. Yeah. Well, and I think so. social media, since, you know, we were talking about that earlier, I think kind of leads to some of that. It's because like, oh, well, you see, not you per se. You're comparing like, yourself to the Kardashians. Right. So, yeah, somebody else has something. You're like, well, man, my stuff's great, but that's better. I want that instead. So I think or, it goes along with that. You just forget. I'm better than that person, but they look more successful than me. Sure. Like, like, and Which can be frustrating. And I think sometimes frustration leads to you being unhappy with what you have. Right. Yeah, instead of stepping back and be like, man, I have all these great things. And yeah, Aaron's got a pool in his backyard and I don't. But my life's still pretty great. And guess what? I can go over and swim in the pool. So or, it's all good. Or something as simple as you're not getting the promotion you want at work or somebody else got it. So suddenly you're not happy with your work situation. Like right. when it was perfectly fine six Before, months prior, sure. right? But you didn't get, Or you're not happy with your life in general because you're not getting the promotion or the, the vertical movement. In your company that you want, it's like, okay, dude, like the sun's coming up tomorrow. Right. The bank account's still solid. You got a great family. Like, okay. Yeah. I don't, I don't understand that, you know, there's, there's people that I interact with on a daily basis and they're just, they're just not happy ever. And I'm like, I, I just don't understand how you can wake up miserable every day. Like you have a roof over your head, you've got a job, you're married, like you have a car, you can go places. You can turn on the air when it's hot. You can turn on the heat when you're cold. You have food every night. Like. People, there's people that don't have that, that they have nothing. Have any of it, right? Don't have any of it right. or even the opportunity to get it. So like, yeah, I, I just don't get like, yeah, take a look at, at, at everything. Take a look back at your life and just be happy with what you have. And it's okay to want more. There's nothing wrong with that. But you should be happy with what you have too. And, and, and find ways to get happy, you know, and which obviously leads to unhappiness, leads to depression, which obviously leads to generally to the overdose and the suicide, which is what we're talking about. And, and you know, that we're not going to get too deep into depression here, but that, you know, that's just an animal that I think we all go through bouts of depression mm -hmm. for various reasons. You know, some people just sink deeper into it and can't get out. Um, and I think a lot of that is a self-awareness that, you know, if you, if you feel yourself kind of trending that way, you know, not just go get help, but just... Do something to break the cycle. Yeah. Like, it's hard. I get it. It's hard. You know, it goes back to the fattishness of diets and stuff. Right. You got to break the cycle mm -hmm. to get into to get into something and get down a path. But, you know, you, you can get into this self-loathing cycle, into this cycle of yeah. being unhappy and then looking for reasons to be. You and I both know some people who are always yeah. looking for reasons to be unhappy. Yeah. They're always, always waiting for the reasons. shoe to get, the other shoe to drop. To always. get disgruntled. And it's like, if you're always looking for it, you're, you're always going to be there. Right. You're going to be, like, you're going to find it. Start, you know, break the side, start looking at the brighter side of things, or maybe you got to surround yourself by different people. Right. Or, or just text a friend, you know, I mean, if you're having, if it's been a week and you're like, man, I'm just kind of in a funk. I guess yeah, I'm feeling hey, bummed. Let's right. do something. Yeah. You want to go get a cup of coffee? Like I just, I need to go. Yeah. Just break that. Do something different. Even if it's literally just a cup of coffee and you sit down, you're like, man, I, you know, this has been going on and, and you just talk through it a little bit and then you start to feel better. You're like, man, I got that out. Like, all right, now I'm, I'm rejuvenated. Sure. Let's get back after it. Well, and then there's a flip side too. You know, we all, we all have friends, but we all really only have, they say you only have really seven true good friends or inner circle of friends. Like if you suddenly see a behavior change or you haven't heard from somebody in a while, you know, pick up the phone. Hey yeah. man, what's up? What's going on? Yeah. You know, check in on people. Like you, you got to check in on your family, but you got to check in on your friends too. And, you know, I think that goes a long way. Sometimes a phone call saves somebody from doing something stupid. Sure. That, you know... You had no intention behind finding a phone call other than saying, hey, what's up? Yeah, and you're let's the person that just, beer, let's you break the cycle the for them. Yeah, you break the cycle for them. And, and I, I've told this story before. We, we've had a student commit suicide here a bunch of years back, and he reached out, and I didn't recognize it because I hadn't seen him in a while, and he wanted to do something that I don't let any students do when I haven't seen him in a while. He wanted to just come in and start, start fighting and start sparring, and I wouldn't let him do it because just for safety's sake. Sure, yeah. And, you know, he kept pressing. I kept saying, no, Tony. But I kept saying, hey, just come in and train. I haven't seen sure. you in a while. Let's catch up. And then I found out a few days later, he did something permanent. Sure. And uh, I was like, I just was like, son of a biscuit. Like, I didn't, like, I, I it was weird. I knew it was weird. It was out of the blue. But he was kind of a quirky kid sure. anyway. And I well, knew he was on meds for, for various reasons. But the second his mom called me and told me, I was just like, I'm an idiot. Well, and sometimes we we do have people that just want to come in like, hey, I just, I just want to come in and spar. Like, they just want that part. So 
it's not like that's something that's never come up before. Sure. But that's uh, obviously, I mean, I'm sure that, the yeah, that was a situation where we're looking back. You're like, God, I wish I could have, the signs would have just been there. Like something would have clicked and I've been like, you know, why don't you come in? And then once he gets here, maybe, you know, that opens up, he'll start talking or, or yeah. something. Oh, no. So. Oh, no. All right, guys, we're, we're going to take another quick break. Uh, again, you're listening to Treadmills and Tangents. I want to remind everybody again of our self-defense clinic. Absolutely free, 100%. If you're listening, if you're a listener of The Answer, 100% free over here at Mid-America Martial Arts, 144th and Chandler. That's next Friday, September 7th. Is September that right? September 7th, yeah. And uh, 5.30, 6.30. Happy hour, self-defense. I think we're going to make it a thing. You should, yeah, and you can, we'll come, come, you can come meet us. Come meet us. Because not only do our voices nice, our faces are nice as well. Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. All right, guys. We'll be right back. When you walk into Mid-American Martial Arts, you're walking into more than punching and kicking. You're walking into a community. And that is what I think sets us apart from everybody else. We train anywhere from four years old, uh, and we have students as old as in their 60s here. Our main programs are Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu, Muay Thai Kickboxing, Judo, as well as our Strength and Conditioning program, which is our Training for Warriors program. Our main goal is that when people leave here, they feel better about themselves. You know, they're a little bit better as a person, they feel a little bit about their life, they feel better about their day. Now, everybody holds baggage, everybody has has stress. This is the place where they can come in and put all that away for a little bit and work on themselves. Yeah, do we hope they can defend themselves better? Sure. Do we hope they can punch and kick a little better? Absolutely. None of that matters if they don't feel good about themselves. And that's the main key. If they can walk out of here feeling good about themselves, feeling good about their life, then, then we've won that day. You're listening to Treadmills and Tangents, your health and wellness show. Coach coming at you with Tim here live from the gym in American Martial Arts. Uh, we got some, so check this out. Uh, we learned Disney World. Disneyland. Oh, Disneyland. Disneyland, yep. Disneyland has decided to start serving alcohol. Yep, so so here's the details for you Disneyland lovers. A Just pe- Disney. Everybody loves Disney. That's, that's Come fair. On. I don't know. I Come said Disneyland on. lover. That was. I mean, that was. Have you been to both Disneyland and Disney World? I have. Yep. I have. Which which is better? I went to Disneyland when I was pretty young. Okay. So I had. I don't have reference. But... I went to Disneyland as a freshman in college. Oh, nice. I was on spring break. Yeah. I went out to visit my cousin out there. We swung through Disneyland for one day, uh, and I recently been to Disney World with my kid. Disney World, I think, is hands down. It's just bigger, better, yeah. more parks. Uh, Anyway, well, it so has we, Epcot and everything at Disney World. Yeah, so. so we did Disney World with our kids, and and we screwed it up. I'll explain that later. Uh, <laughs> but we also did a Disney cruise. Ooh, how yeah. was that? You know what? Uh, I, it is awesome. It, yeah. it really is, and you want for nothing on on those cruises. And uh, so the way the Disney cruise works is you have. Just like any cruise, if you ever taken a cruise, like so, the Disney cruises, you have you get your room and then you get these uh, same thing at Disney World. You, oh, you, you get, get the these little, little bracelets, yeah. Now you can charge anything, which is dangerous. You just wave your wrist right. and it charges stuff. So it's um, not all inclusive. Uh no. Well, I mean, you pay for your alcohol, that and that's sure. really about it. And yeah. of course, any merchandise you want to get, right? But all the food and everything else is in accoutrement. So um, you there's like five five star restaurants, and the food is unbelievable I on bet. this boat so what's cool is what they do is you so you show up you have a breakfast and lunch are, are on your own and there's just buffets all over the place and then uh you always have an assigned dinner time but what's really cool is you show up and your wait staff is assigned to you so we had i can't remember his name we had this black guy awesome dude so funny and it was uh, another gal she was i want to say she was european uh she was greek in fact, because I had asked her for a recipe for a chicken bakery. That's why, <laughs> that's why I remember it. So, but what happens is they follow you. Oh wow! All the night. So every so you there's you'll get like so like if it's like a four three day four night cruise whatever it happens to be each night you go to a different restaurant but they are your same waiter and same oh, waiter. Cool. So they know you. Right. They start to figure they, they out what you like you, and what you want. Yeah. And and it's and it's as much as you want. So you naturally. Um, uh, tell like they know what you want and it's as much as you want sure and and um like if you want five desserts you can try all five That's desserts awesome. like we had there was a sea bass one night and it was 
absolutely awesome. Yeah. And he goes, how was it? And I said, dude, that was the best sea bass I've ever had. And he goes, you want another one, don't you? And he just brought me another one, right? That's awesome. So it was awesome. So, and then the kids get to know him. So he's playing and joking with the kids. And right. So it is really, really cool in that respect. And there's some adult nightclubs on there, which we never got to go to. And there's this area that is for kids only. Oh, cool. So there's a teen only area. There's a kids only area. So it's basically daycare. Right. But it it is the, the most awesome daycare in the history of daycare. <laughs> right. So Cinderella's you, they, watching your kids. No, well, they got they got like this movie room. They got this gaming room. They got like a Star Wars room, a Lego room, like arts and crafts room. So you basically can just drop your kid off, and then the adults can go cruise. Yeah. Well, the problem was our kids wouldn't stay. Right. They, they always wanted to be by mom and dad. Sure. So we never got to just drop them and leave them. I wanted to stay there. Like there was, right. there was some fun. Like, can stuff I get in that there. Lego room? They had a, a full mock up of the Millennium Falcon, like on oh, the wow. inside of it. It, yeah. it was pretty cool in that respect. So, um, yeah, you know the, the Disney cruises are awesome, and of course all the characters are walking around, sure. and and the place is just gorgeous, and it's spotless, just like Disney World. It's spotless, right? And it, it, it's it's a lot of fun. The big pool. The only thing I didn't like about it is so when you when you see pictures of these cruise ships and they see the main pool. It looks huge. It's right. not. It's kind of like they do with house photography. They use a lens where it makes it so, look the room bigger so than it really is. So you walk up to the main pool and there's 8 million families and their kids crammed in this pool. So there's like one little spot for you to stand Of course the water's in. warmer than it should be, if right. you know what I mean. And uh, <laughs> Maybe a little green. <laughs> so, But the adult pools were pretty emptied out, but we never got to go up there because sure. our kids. But yeah, yeah. there's cool things they can do and there's like little treasure hunts kids can go on. There's a full stage theater. So we saw a couple plays. Oh, and wow. Then, and then I saw the uh, the Star Wars movie when it first came out. I actually saw it there on the ship. Oh wow, that's cool! Because uh, there's a full movie theater and saw the Jungle Book. So that the Disney has cruise, be huge. oh, it's it's immense. It, but it it is really cool. Yeah, I've never gone on a cruise. My wife's gone on a few, and it's on our bucket list someday. Yeah. But maybe we'll wait till now, Bank gets older. Now to do a Disney, Disney cruise. World. We did Disney World a few years back, and they were still pretty young, and they were probably a little too young because we we caught a, like a late flight, so we got in late. And got a uh, at one of the all sports hotels. We got a room there, which you don't need a nice room because you're always right. Yeah, you're not. There so to we sleep. did. We did. We made a typical mistake. So we got in late, so they were off their sleep schedule. And then, of course, we did the typical mistake all families try to do is see the whole park all day long. And they the were kids wiped. were just overtired. They were wiped, and there's a bazillion people, so you're being overprotective. And of course, then they stop wanting to listen, and they get cranky, and then I get frustrated. Right. And then, of course, it was Sophia's birthday, so we did. We had actually had lunch in Cinderella's castle, Ooh. and she got the whole Cinderella treatment. She got done up like a princess, nice. and of course, but she was being a cranky little, you know what? Right, because she was tired. You know, really. so I and then I started getting frustrated. And then we figured out the last couple of days. All right, half a day at the park, half a day at the pool, and just hang out and yeah. let them swim. And then, you know, so I, I left. We left that experience. It was great. Don't get me wrong. It was sure. great. And I'm like, man, I can't tell if the kids had fun or not. Because I was like, I was just overly frustrated. They, but when you talk to them, they, they thought they had the best time yeah. in the world. So it's tough to gauge if they were sure. having fun. Because I was always just uber frustrated. Right. And there's, I mean, that's, uh, that's sensory overload. For, especially I, for a kid. I don't like, you know. I can't. When you look at, when you're at Disney World, I don't see a single parent enjoying themselves. <laughs> they're all, <laughs> they're all just freaking out. You don't. Yeah. But now we have a chance. Right, so so Disneyland. Um, so apparently, fun fact that, that I learned today, there was a secret exclusive Club Thirty Three where you could get drinks at Disneyland. I'm guessing we're not on the membership list well, for that. I, well, so on the cruise you could get drinks. Sure, but I I feel like when I was at Disney World, there was you could have gotten you may. So this is just talking about Disneyland specifically. So what they're doing is they're bringing Star Wars Galaxy Edge in 2019, and they are going to make a special cocktail. That you can get it'll be pre-made, but if you're of age, you can get it in a unique vessel, and you can drink in the Star Wars area. So they're going to set up like a bar, so you're like at one of the bars from Star Wars, and you're so able to sit and Epcot, have a drink. So at you could drink, right? In fact, the, I went there in college, and I was part of the allure. Try to have a drink in every country and see if you can make it around the world. How'd that go? Not good, <laughs> but I mean, good being relative, right? Sure. Uh, Didn't make it around the so, world. So it's kind of a so you could drink at Disney World and Disneyland. So this is just like a new. Right, Disneyland only had that Club Thirty Three. Okay, so Disney World had it, but now See, I knew, you'll be able to I knew walk I like in. Disney World better. You'll be able to walk in or another. and and have a drink at the Star Wars bar. So that's kind of cool. Yeah, and I, it'd probably be more enjoyable for parents. parents sure, around you the take world. the edge off just a little bit. But yeah, I would I would recommend uh, a Disney cruise for anybody. It was if you got kids yeah. that are willing, especially if they're willing to stay in the kids area, and you can go do some adult cruising on your own. 
Uh, it was, and dude, my one complaint was the hot tub wasn't that hot. Like it was kind of. We, we we tend to find that when we go it's places. It's kind of like a lukewarm. We go to get in the hot tub and we're like, Meh. I think they're afraid of some older patron getting in there, and sure getting burned, like having a heart McDonald's attack coffee or something. Or something. Yeah. <laughs> so did you guys dock it all anywhere and do stuff? Or was, yeah, okay. so so they'll take you. We docked in Jamaica. Ooh, uh, nice for a day, and then they have a private island they, they'll dock on for the day. That, why does that not? And, and the me? private island has it's like a resort, so they got all these like there's beach areas and there's all these restaurants like hut type restaurants, right. and they do you know shows and stuff. Of course, the day we docked, it rained, so we didn't get as much time on the island as we wanted. But yeah, right. Disney's got their own little private island that they'll pull up to. And did you your get, wife and a daughter do the hair thing where they get the beads in their hair? So it all. I want to say my daughter did. Yeah, yeah my daughter. At one Melissa point. was more like. I don't it's a little too so. risky for my wife. Yeah, sure. Going, going corner. She's a little more. Yeah, true. She's a little more of the straight and narrow. A little vanilla in that, right. in that respect. But my daughter will try it. She'll try stuff like that, especially when it comes to fashion and sure. Stuff. She's that's all true. About she it. does. She does enjoy the fashion. She's all about it. But being it well, it, and being in Catholic school, it's hard for her because she can't wear any of that stuff. Right. She can't wear makeup or even nail polish. Sure. Where she goes. So it's like the forbidden fruit. They're like, oh, I want to see what that's like. Yeah. So when she's at home, and which is funny because she's got more makeup and stuff in her room than. You can shake a stick at. Right. She's not allowed to use it. So summertime, she's all about it. She's, she's just plastered she's up. She's constantly wearing stuff or constantly. She Once in a while, she'll try to sneak makeup at school. And yeah. I'll be like, what are you doing? Right. You, you know, know they're going to tell. Yeah, right. You know you can't walk in there like that. Uh, but it's funny. I mean, typical. I mean, I think as right. she gets older, she'll probably push it more and more. Sure. I imagine the eighth graders are really always trying to get away with it. So your son watches people play games on YouTube, and then your daughter watches makeup YouTube tutorials on YouTube to do like the cat eyes or whatever the fashion thing is. You know what she is. watches a lot of is like uh, baking and cooking, like hmm. different baking things where like people make like Cinderella cakes and different kinds of cakes. Well, that's true. I've been over there a few times, and she's made cupcakes or some things. She's made some dessert, so. Yeah. Which is which is terrible because then it's around me and I want to eat it. And as a dad, you're obligated to try one. Well, as a friend of hers, I was dad, obligated to try. Dad, one. did you try my cupcake? Right. And you're like, I don't want to, but I, I know I'm going to right. because there's she not is the hill you want to die on. Right? Right. Like, I made this cupcake it. with love, Dad. What's wrong with you? Don't you love me? <laughs> and and I will say this: she's always heavy handed on the icing. Always nothing which is wrong fine. with that. Yeah, you know. <laughs> You know that'll be this weekend. I'll be uh, I'll be heavy handed on the ice cream. Have some Brahms Cust- custard. Oh, the custard. Excuse me. Well, no, here. Brahms is ice is it? cream. The other place was custard. That's right. Yeah. Either way, it's delicious. I mean, anybody, no matter what anybody, it anybody is. from the South Midwest, what what is the middle, the lower Midwest? Yeah. Knows what Brahms is. Yeah, it is. It's an Oklahoma. Favorite. I will not forget the first time we went down there like three years ago i think was the first time i went and we went there and i was like oh what is this sweet nectar so now that's we make well, it they a point have, we they have go. their own cows brahms has like their own cow oh really I, i'm pretty sure that where they huh. get all their cream for their ice cream it is good every flavor is delicious it is it is and then uh various various assortments of of sundays yeah. as well yes but you can always rationalize training hard and having some ice cream absolutely as, and you're out of town as a man. reward different now, different area you're, code you're you're, you're, you're Anti keto friends are going to come after you now for admitting that, that's eating a, ice that's cream. all right. I, if I'm training six hours with chai, I'm pretty sure I can eat ice cream and it's not going to put a it's dent. It's lazy. In it. That's right. the lazy part right. of the lazy keto. And I and I have always said I will only eat ice cream when I'm out of town, and I and I still stick to that for the most part. Every every once in a while I dabble. For the most part, yeah, you dabble. What else is what else is on the tweeter? Oh, you got a this day in history. Oh yes, yes. We have yes, a little so, fun factoid. So this uh, cool. this day in history. The the Public Health Act was enacted, correct? Yes. Now I got to get my phone to bring it. And, and Tim lost our, our Twitter feed, which again, we are so technically savvy on this show. Oh, here it is. My phone turned sideways. It wouldn't go back the other way. So in uh, the Public Health Act in 1848 um, celebrates its 170th anniversary. Um, actually, tomorrow. Oh no, today the 31st. It is the 31st. Look at me. Um, so basically, this was the first thing that started trying to get sanitation and environmental and social threats, um, getting a standard for some of that stuff. So, um, and, and the big the big crux of it was to prevent and quell the outbreaks. Sure, you know where the whatever outbreak might be. Clary was the big one, is what finally caused him to enact it. The basically saying, look, we got to get a handle on this. We're going to wipe out the entire country so the public health act just basically said all right we need to have some public health standards if you own a public establishment it needs to be this clean you got to follow these procedures right and which which opened the door for i'm sure osha and all these other you know good you know right. ada necessary every, evils and necessary you evils that just keep people safe when you're out in public and what's interesting is they said one of the the biggest 
health gains of this was life expectancy has increased greatly due to this act and being able to um, control some of that stuff, stop the outbreaks, have cleaner environments. So people well, are living I was having longer. this discussion with somebody literally just the other day about um, life expectancy and that, you know, are a lot of the diseases we're seeing because we're living longer that we normally wouldn't see them. Sure. We're not supposed to be living to be like 90 years old. The human wasn't built to live that long, but you know, medicine uh, is causing us to live longer. And sure. the response was, well, is medicine really? Because they're, they're finding there's some data that says medicine isn't helping us live longer. I go, well, it's not just medicine. I go, just sanitation practices. Sure, yeah. Right? Things that would... That we're, we're not dying. We're not getting dysentery left right. from right. <laughs> you know, Thank like, God like, for like that. Like many yeah. countries still are. Just right. our drinking water is clean. Right. Right? You know, just the, dis- the, the sanitation practices, which is what that act right. started... Is, is keeping us alive. Well, and the in science that, behind medicine and, and being able to, to track stuff and have all these people that can collaborate in a, in a timely fashion where you're not waiting for a horse to drive your stuff cross country, I think has helped that stuff too because now it's instant. Like we can try this instantly and give these people feedback. And, and so I think medicine does have some effect on that. Well, you can argue that immunizations sure. are keeping more people alive right. that would normally die off due right. to the disease. And then, you know, again... Clean water, sand. I mean, just the fact that we have a toilet that flushes, that, that flushes and takes, you know, some human of the things we saw in Thailand were. Yeah, we were just right. in the country where it was a hole, or when you turn the corner, you realize what you were walking. Right. In. You, it was you no had no doubt what you were walking water, into. And it was, yeah, <laughs> it was, it was funky. You, you had a bucket of water to wash your backside, and that yeah. was it. No yeah. toilet paper. Luckily. Or I only had to go number one when we were at those establishments, so I was good to oh, go. Oh, you quickly realize I'm going to hold out until I right. get to the hotel. Yeah, where there was, you know, I mean, just think about that. Just plumbing. Yeah, I mean, plumbing is is keeping us alive longer than it sure. would normally, just because we can we can flush away or we can rinse things down, or you know, garbage garbage practices, right? You know, part of sanitation is someone coming to take your garbage. Yeah. Otherwise, where would it be? Yeah, in your backyard. In your in backyard, a sitting in a in a hole. Right. And or we have if you took dishwashers that that. High high heat rinse our dishes high off. Heat and pressure that that sanitize. Like just think about that. Yeah, just a sanitizing dishwasher. Yeah, I mean, think about how often we we might get sick yeah, if you cut we, chicken on a cutting board. You put it in the dishwasher, it's clean. Yeah, and it sanitizes. Right. Or just the understanding that hey, when you cut chicken, you do need to clean that. Right. The yeah. Cutting board. Yeah. He, he can't roll behind it with your apple. Yeah, it's that's not going to go well. <laughs> Potentially, although I, I do think sometimes we, we've gotten weaker in a little bit too. And sure, that, you know, uh, I think you do see a lot more allergies. You do see a lot more sensitivities. Like when I was growing up, I never. You maybe heard of somebody with a peanut allergy, right? Or may, with a there's, food there's allergy. A ton of like, them now. You know, now it's just like, oh my gosh, if there's a peanut within a block of this school, yeah, we got to shut down. Like kids can't bring in treats anymore. Right. When you have birthdays, it has to be prepackaged, store bought, yeah, store bought, yep. and it has to say peanut free. Or yep. Otherwise, I'm like, holy smokes, I can't believe we didn't kill more people. Yeah. When I was growing I know, up, that's, it's that's it's crazy. I feel like um, gluten's kind of that way too, which. And I don't know if that's just if we become going more back aware. to our earlier conversation. That right. is something that's very faddish. The gluten sensitivity. <laughs> There's a lady that works with me, and every time we go somewhere, I'll I'll make the comment to the waiter is like, "Is that gluten free?" And it just drives her nuts because I'm I feel like them, them and vegans have to make sure people know that they are the way they are. So, I, and I don't know if that's just more prevalent now because of social media, like we were talking about earlier, and some of that stuff, or if it's or if it's like you said, because the, people aren't as exposed to exposed to it as much. Is it that now we're starting to develop, develop these these things. Well, awareness too. Yeah, I mean, there's there's awareness. Sure, there's heightened sensitivity. I mean, you can go to, to a everything. doctor and they can test you immediately, so, and, and then you'll know. Yeah, right. And then you know, just like just like Amber Alerts, where we're heightened sure. uh, awareness to everything. But yeah, I mean, we probably did have kids with peanut allergies and just were rolling the dice. Yeah, they ate a the peanut, time. didn't feel good, and you're like. <laughs> Send well, them must home. Have, They're must fine. have been a bad sandwich. We don't know. Yeah, <laughs> it was lunch. Rub some tussle on it. He's good. Well, just think of that too, you know, when just school lunches and then just, you know, at one point you didn't have to wear hair nets. Right. While you were handling food. Yeah, you get a hair in there, like extra yeah. fiber. <laughs> That's gross. That is gross. We, here, here's a sick story. It, it, it's kind of funny. So we, um, I was home from college one time and uh, we were, it was somebody's party. It was a birthday party or something. And we had a lot of people uh, in my small town. So just gathered in the backyard right. and everybody knew everybody, but... There was somebody's cousin or something who, like, it was, they would have violent reactions just at, at the thought of hair being in food. Oh, or the man. The thought of just hair. Just full on gagging, huh? So, uh, you know, 
being being young and stupid. <laughs> Poking the bear. We thought it was funny. So one of my buddies purposely, you know, they, they got a girl's hair and he was eating cake or something. So he set it on his plate, right? Yeah. So he's eating the cake beside this, right. this girl. He goes, oh, what's this? And he picks up the hair. And he goes, oh, and then licks it off like he's licking oh, the icing man. off. It. And this girl freaked out, ran and covered her mouth like she was going to start vomiting. And I la- we laughed, but then I felt bad right. because I was like, I didn't, I didn't never see anybody have a reaction right. like that. Especially that, that bang of reaction. It's not but, even like, oh. But of course, he played it up. He goes, oh, what's this? And then licks it off oh, the man. <laughs> right in front of her. And I was like, wow. Yeah, that's, that's, uh, that's pushing it a little bit. That, it, but, I mean, it was funny, but I was yeah, like, that wow. sounds like pretty funny. But, but I, never, I never heard of me. I mean, everybody has their fetishes to right. some extent. But hearing, I mean, hearing the food is gross. Don't get Abs- me wrong. Yeah, absolutely. But I it's live, worse I, when you chew, and then all of a sudden you're like, "What's that?" And you pull it out, and you're like, "Oh, that's." I gross. live with two two women that have long hair. Yeah, the, there's hair everywhere. My, like, I don't think a meal goes by where I'm just like, "Oh, there's hair in the food." Yeah. All right. I have that in my jeans. The shower, my, Jesus. My, my wife and my sister both have long hair, and there was a. A winter where I turned the defroster on my Jeep and red and brown hair came up out of my <laughs> defroster. And I was like, well, they've been in here for a while. I remember being in a shower. I'm in a shower by myself. And I'm showering off. All of a sudden, like, on my body was a long hair. I'm like, what? It was just hanging out like, waiting. Where, like, where <laughs> where did this... it, like, I probably just brushed up against the wall right. or something. And, and there I'm it like, was. How is this even on me? Yep. But, yeah. And then, of course, you had dogs in the equation. There's yep. hair everywhere in the yeah. house. Like, we've got three dogs now. And, and a cat. And I got two long-haired women in my house. There's, I, you I put something black I ingest on it more hair. Like, I ingest more hair than the average person does, right. I think, probably in a lifetime. You spit out hairballs like once a week. You got <laughs> to gotta get it out. You, you see me start dry heaving. Right. Just look out because the hairball is coming up. That's, that's gross. <laughs> when I, I, I used to have a husky, my dog Jocko, uh, and I had to put him down uh, probably five years ago now, maybe six years ago. I still find on some of my clothes. Yeah. His hair. It like I mean, weaves huskies. in. I'm like, I don't even know how it gets in there. Well, and a husky is notorious for shedding like beasts. You right. Know? And he was, of course, he was a light haired husky, so there was just white hair on everything. Right. So, like, it, it's just, it's funny that his hair's still around. It's kind of a, a sad reminder too sure. when I go, oh, that's a Jocko. That's, yeah. that's his hair, you know, right. it reminds me of him. But yeah, man, it's just, it's everywhere. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, it's mine too. I got to clean out the drain. That, that, that's was, one that of, was an awkward. That's one of the worst. Well, I was trying to decide that how to air. tell that story. That was radio dead air, you know, which is the death of radio. The uh, <laughs> cleaning out the the shower drain is one of the grossest things. Like, and my wife won't do it. So doing it, like, okay, I, I'll even admit that's a gag reflex. Right, that's like, like a, yeah, I'll pull it out. My, oh god, it's and then like you got to breathe and it, the smell. I don't know why hair. So smells once in a while, here at the gym because we got three showers right. running and and they'll get clogged. And I mean. Big guess which one gets clogged first, the right. women's shower. Sure. And, you know, I'll lift up that, that grate. I'll yeah. be like, ooh. Right. <laughs> yeah. Like, what is it? I don't right. even know it's what alive. it is. It's alive. Like, it comes out and starts walking around. I, it would surprise you if it didn't move. Like, I'd freak out. Yeah. I would lose it. I would throw it and <laughs> run. A, if like it's it, pay on wheels. If it moves, it's all wet and you nasty. Should, you know, you should make Susie do that one. Su- Susie's a woman. I feel like that would be all right for her to other women's hair. Like, that's okay. So, so just like in every job description, you know, it's it's duties as a sign. Other duties as a sign. Other duties yeah. as a sign. It's, it's the fine print that every job description has. And the glare coming from Susie, who is here at the gym, uh, is real. <laughs> is, is, the normal smiling Susie is not so smiley at the moment. I, I, do, I do feel, though, that as, as a small business owner, there is some degree of owner privilege. And the owner privilege comes in the duties as a sign Absolutely. statement and all and all work statements. And all hair removal from said drain shall now be passed on. <laughs> no doubt. All right, guys, that's about all the time we have. Thanks for tuning in again. Don't forget our self defense seminar next Friday. Happy hour self defense right here at Mid American Martial Arts, five thirty to six thirty, September seventh. Absolutely free. So if you're listening, bring a family, bring friends. One hundred percent free for anybody listening to the answer. Again, treadmills and tangents, your health and wellness show. Have a good weekend. See ya.
When you walk into Mid-American Martial Arts, you're walking into more than punching and kicking. You're walking into a community, and that is what I think sets us apart from everybody else. We train anywhere from four years old, uh, and we have students as old as in their 60s here. Our main programs are Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu, Muay Thai Kickboxing, Judo, as well as our Strength and Conditioning Program, which is our Training for Warriors program. Our main goal is that when people leave here, they feel better about themselves. You know, they're a little bit better as a person, they feel a little bit about their life, they feel better about their day. Now, everybody holds baggage, everybody has stress. This is the place where they can come in and put all that away for a little bit and work on themselves. Yeah, do we hope they can defend themselves better? Sure. Do we hope they can punch and kick a little better? Absolutely. None of that matters if they don't feel good about themselves. And that's the main key. If they can walk out of here feeling good about themselves, feeling good about their life, then, then we've won that day.